Hi, welcome to Wendy's Workshops. These games and activities will use zip strips, the reproducible paper piece used with the Quick Tutor Math Pocket Slider. These are this is math the math pocket slider is used to help kids become more fluent with their math facts. If you would like to learn more about that, go to Wendy's Bookworks and or watch our teaching multiplication and division facts fast track. Teachers and parents have requested these extension activities to further accelerate the learning process and expand some subtle numeric concepts. The zip strip pages have two sections. The zip strip section itself and the written assessment section. These pages are reproducible, so you should copy two uh, or make one copy of the written assessment for each player. In this case, I have made two copies. I have two players, A and B. I am using multiplication zip strip times two. So all of these uh, equations are either multiplication or division using two. The other thing you need is dice. So you want to ask the the uh, student to look up on the to look on their zip strip and determine the largest number in the answer column. In this case with this strip, the largest number is 18. So how many dice will I need? I will need three dice because there are six dots on each die and three times six is 18. So already we're having to do math to figure out just how many pieces we're going to need to play the game. What if my biggest number was 24? How many dice would I need? I would need four. Six times four is 24. You can see as you would get into the nines, the, the students are going to have to rethink how many dice they're going to use and how they might, strategies that they might use to calculate using smaller numbers of dice. The game starts by finding all the zero answers. Why? Because there are no zeros on the dice. What zero answers will I have? Anything times zero. And as the uh, students do play the game with more and more strips, they're going, that's going to become apparent. And they're going to pick up on the fact that any time, anything times zero is zero. The most Are the zeros most likely to be in the times or the division section? They're going to be in the times section because anything divided by zero is not a permissible function. Another key concept. So roll the dice and the answer on the dice is the answer to the equation. Fill in one equation for each roll. So if I um, roll 10, I can choose to fill in 2 times 5, or I can choose to fill in 20 divided by 2. Each of those answers is 10, but I'm only going to fill in one at a time. The, these uh, students keep going until somebody fills in their card. They're going to have to think about, for instance, to get an answer of 2, are they going to use 3 dice? No, they will never get an answer to with three dice. So another subtle concept that comes into play with the game. A variation is to roll the dice for an answer and fill in all equations that have that answer. For instance, let's say I roll six, I can fill in two times three and 12 divided by two. The students learn that there are many ways to arrive at the same answer, important math, an, an important math concept. Our second activity, uh, in, for our second activity, you need blank pieces of paper, and you need the zip strip itself. 
Now, you can use the zip strip that the child used after he completes his goal of one minute no errors using the pocket, then you can just cut then you can just cut up that zip strip or you can make another copy and you want to cut the zip strips into little rectangles that include both the question and the answer. Then you take your blank paper and you're going to write uh, zero and then your numbers however high you want to go. In this case, I have actually used two zip strips, the multiplication and division for twos and threes, and I have gone to 30, up to 30. You glue each equation according to the answer. So, for instance, on this one, I have 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. For 2, I have 2 times 1 is 2, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Those are under 2. Under 4, I have 2 times 2 is 4, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 12 divided by 3 is 4. You can see how these concepts build. And for example, in the ones, am I ever going to have a multiplication? The only multiplication I number it, it, the only multiplication equation I will have here will be one times one. Everything else will have to be a division equation. Same with the zeros, only the opposite. The only equation I will have here will be something times zero. You can see by doing this, you begin to also see areas like the 11 and the 17, which are going to take a long time to fill up, and thus bring in the idea of prime numbers. At home, you might want to put one number at the head of a page and then add, as the, as the uh, child finishes each zip strip, you cut the zip strip up and then add it to the, to the page number. That's a great home project, and again, it begins to look like the pages we have up on the wall, and they will see the concepts building. If you are homeschooling or in a classroom, you might want to put those pages with, for instance, this is 8, 9, and 10 up on the wall and build. You'll end up going to at least 100 or if you do all your nines, you'll have 144 pages. Um, but each And each student gets a chance to cut and glue one zip strip. The patterns are interesting, instructive, and broaden a student's numeric concepts. Numeric concepts are often subtle and have underlying complexities. It is crucial for our children's future to have a feel for numbers. Thank you.